loud. I don't know if you guys can hear how loud my volume just got, but it was loud on my end. Um, all right, y'all. I'm super excited for our Monday night team huddle. Um, we do these every single week. And so we've been taking weeks on weeks on weeks, just highlighting and spotlighting um, different leaders um, and just sharing different tips and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm super excited to be interviewing one of our own. Um, so Brittany, I'm just going to have you kind of just introduce like we always do and just share a little bit about your story and how you got started and then we'll jump into some questions. Yeah, absolutely. I know there's a lot of people on here that don't know who I am. So I think it's good so they can kind of see where I came from. Um, August, I will have been doing this for nine years. That's insane to me. Um, I told Matt, I can't wait till I can say it's been 10 years, right? Like that, that's my, my, I just want to be able to say 10 years. Um, I was only at my dental job for six. So it, I remember like when this passed that it was also like a surreal moment, but um, so a little bit about how I got started. I got started because a stranger sent me a Facebook message and literally said, I think you'd be good at what I do. Um, I told her, no, thank you. A little bit about why I told her no thank you. I thought the wraps didn't work. Five years before that, a lady sold me a wrap for weight loss. Um, obviously, it's not for weight loss, but that's what she sold it to me for. So when I wrapped and didn't lose any weight, I just didn't think it worked. So five years later, this girl messages me on Facebook, and I would never, ever, ever bash someone else's thing. That's just not who I am. And so I didn't give her all the reasons. I just said, I don't think I would be of any help to you. You know, I wish you nothing but the best, and that was it. Um, one of my favorite things about our interaction was that she didn't stop doing what she wanted to do just because I told her no, right? She, like, I, she just went to the next person. And so I watched over three, three and a half months, I watched her life change. I watched her post about products that I wanted. Um, products other than the wraps. Now, just a little side note, I did end up joining, trying the wraps and found out what they were really for and got amazing results, but they weren't for weight loss. Um, but anyway, so I watched her like post about products that I wanted, but I also watched her earn a bonus. At the time I was a single mom. I was working 40 to 50 hours a week. Um, and I was working my dental job. I mean, it was like, Traffic was crazy. So by the time that I would get off of work, get home, it was dinner time, bath time, bedtime to do it all over again. And after I watched her earn this bonus, what really, really, really reached my heart was Ty. He is now going to be 14. That's insane to me. But when I joined, he was like five ish, whatever. And before that, he was sick all the time. And so I was so frustrated that anytime he was sick, I couldn't afford to take off. And every time he was sick, I kid you not, I would text my mom who is a teacher and she had personal days. So she's the one that took off. So that's actually why I joined. I joined so that I wouldn't have to use a credit card for groceries and gas like I was having to do sometimes. But more importantly than anything, I just wanted the extra income that if I needed to take a day off that I could take it without having to struggle paying my bills. Um, I ended up saying yes, even though my mom, my mom's like my best friend and one of my biggest supporters, but she thought I was crazy. She nicely said, I don't see how you're going to be able to do this. You don't even like to talk in front of like five or more people. You get nervous and blotchy. She said, and I remember crying to her and saying, but at this point, I'm tired of wondering, like, I just want to join. And if it doesn't work, at least I can say I tried. But I'm tired of thinking about it all the time. And so I said yes. Um, for those of you that are on here that hear this objection, I didn't have the $99. Okay. I had to put it on a credit card. Um, but I remember going to the girl that I signed up with and I told her, I was like, can you promise me I will at least make the $99 back? If you can promise me I can make it back, I see no problem in putting on a credit card. I was getting my nails done. I was eating out at Taco Bell and it adds up, right? Like all that stuff adds up when people say they don't have $99. No, they're putting it somewhere. You have to show them that this is worth it. And so I was like, will you promise me I will make it back? Will you promise me I'll be able to get some, some product? And then just a couple hundred dollars a month. And she had just, I mean, but she was honest with me. She said, yes, you'll make your 99 back. Yes, you're going to be getting some product. Yes, you'll make a couple hundred dollars a month. 
But something that really stuck out to me that I feel like all of you guys need to hear this because I feel like there is probably someone on here that is this person that you said yes, but you're still dabbling, but then you're expecting it to pay you like a full-time income with less than a part-time work ethic, right? I am so thankful that when I joined, my upline said, if you're all red, I asked her, I said, if I don't like it, can I quit at any time? And she said, if you're already thinking about quitting, then this business is not for you. And she was like, you're going to have to go all in. So to fast forward to the rest of my story, I promised, I didn't tell her this, but I promised in myself that I was going to go all in and do everything she told me to do, even if I did not want to. Um, Cause back then you were, I mean, there was no TikToks and reels. There were no host to post. There were no scripted messages. There were no boards. There was none of that. Okay. We're talking going in people's homes and having parties. Okay. Even though I do love that, this is way easier than it was back then. Okay. Even though I still love that. Don't get me wrong. Right. Sometimes I wish we could go back to that and get rid of like all this other stuff that we have sometime. I'm grateful for it. Right. Um, but I was that was way out of my comfort zone. But to be honest, I was just so sick and tired of making excuses, being broke. I mean, I know Ty's first vacation, I saved for three years to be able to take him on his first vacation. And I was working 40 to 50 hours a week. I'm like, something's got to give here. Um, yeah. So 10 months after I joined, I was able to triple my dental income. And two months later, I was able to come home and do this full time. And I've been doing it full time ever since. So that's kind of like my story, long, but condensed. Well, and now you have a whole other child, you know, all those things that happen. And that's the hardest part, especially when you've been in this song. It's like, oh, what part do we need to, I forget. Like, what part do I tell? I'm like, well, tell, remind me what happened in my story. Cause I forget. Yes. There's been a lot. Yeah, I did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I did end up getting remarried and I do have another child. I forgot. That's yeah. two things. Two big monuments. Okay. Yeah. Now I got you covered. I got you covered. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit. So obviously, you know, I'm going to really focus on just probably like this past year as far as business goes, because I think that's really where the difference is. And so will you talk a little bit about just the shift that you felt probably within the last like two, three months of just things that you've been doing and things that are helping you kind of just um, really propel your business forward? Yeah, absolutely. And I think in order to share this and to, for people to really understand where I'm coming from, I have to give a little bit of background of kind of like what happened. This is a business. You're going to have highs. You're going to have lows. The awesome part about this business is that there is residual income, but the reality of residual income is it eventually will go away if you stop working, right? And so I had built this large business. I had, I mean, consistently making six figures coming in. Um, and then but a, it was like a lot of things happened and it's not like a poor me attitude. I've never been like that, but I would say if it could have happened, it happened to me. It was like friendships change, you know, um, business change. My dad got sick and was in the hospital. We almost lost him. It was like everything happened at once. And the reality was I kind of put the business kind of on the back burner. I never like completely stopped, but I stopped enough. And someone out here needs to hear this. I stopped enough that my team stopped completely, okay? And I don't like this statistics, that this, I don't like this phrase, but very few people is this not ring true for. Most of your team will do a percentage of what you do. Out of the masses, you may find some people, if you stay in this long-term, that will work harder than you. But usually your team will do a percentage of what you do. So once I took my 110% and I dropped down to 80, well, then my, my team kind of went at 60. And then when I went from 80 and I went to 60, they took the 60 and went to 40. Well, all of a sudden I was going 30% and a lot of my team was nowhere to be found. Okay. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying I take the accountability. Now, this is about a year, year and a half ago. Okay. But here's the thing people kept asking me, people are like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I was like, here's the problem. And I'm just, I'm a shoot you straight kind of gal. And I told every single person the exact same thing. It don't matter what company I would go to. It doesn't matter if I would try something else. It doesn't matter if I would give up and go to a nine to five right now, Brittany has to figure out Brittany. 
Brittany, the problems that I was having would follow me no matter where I was going or no matter what I was doing. And so I knew I had to take some time and like heal and figure out what do I want my world to actually look like. Now, I had conversations with my husband and some really dear, dear friends um, that they just said, like, are you sure that you actually want to do this? And here's the best part. I was kind of enough removed um, not removed hundred percent. And when I say removed, let me, let me give you the best example that I can give. I was in a situation that new people did not know who Brittany Landrum was. And I had never been in that kind of situation, right? The people that had been with me for a long time knew the difference in my work ethic, but the new people to my team and the other people that had enrolled, they didn't know who I was. So if I was going to go, I could quietly exit the back door, not say anything and just kind of disappear. And I remember talking to my husband and saying, I have to make a, I have to make a big decision here. And it, it wasn't that I didn't want to do the business. It was, I needed to get my head on my rear end. And I was struggling figuring out how to do that. Like, how can I actually get it together? And so Matt was like, well, I'm going to support you with whatever you do. But like, do you love what you do? And I said that that's what the hardest part for me. I actually love doing this business, right? I actually, I like making posts. I like adding the stories. I like doing the TikToks and reels. I like doing all the things. I just had to get my mind right. And that's where I'm going to go and answer your question is saying the biggest difference was I stopped overcomplicating things. I made, I, I started to drastically change who I was letting talk into my ear who I was watching, if I, and, I, and I'm just going to put it this way, if I saw anyone was having even a second of a doubt or anyone was talking about what they were seeing on the left, on the right, I was unfollowing so that I didn't even surround myself with any of it because I knew if I was going to get back on this saddle and I was going to go 110%, which is how Brittany Landrum works, right? I either go balls to the wall or there's, I don't have that, that middle groove. It's not my personality. Some of you have the middle groove. I don't, right? I'm all in or it's like, we got issues. And so I started protecting my mindset, who I was spending my time with. Um, yeah, that's kind of like that kind of answer in a nutshell. What next question do you have for me? Okay, so I know, well, like, especially these like last couple months, you know, you really kind of revamped the things, especially like, even some of it is not even necessarily like revamping. It could be like bringing back old things that you knew were working for you. So will you talk a little bit about maybe just how you spend your mornings or the certain things that are like your non-negotiables now that you've kind of like regrouped all those thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. In 2020, I had my best year ever. And a lot of people, it was their worst. And when I say best year ever, I'm not talking just business right? Business is really, really, really important to me, but it's not the most important thing to me. And so, you know, I was, I would say that I wanted my marriage to be different. It was never bad, but I'm like, I'm the type of person that I will never settle for good. Like I want good of nothing. I want great. I want better than that. And so I was, I even felt it in parenting too. I'm like, man, I want to be a better wife. I want to be a better mom. I want to be like all of these things. So in 2020, um, it was actually a conversation um, with one of our mentors. She taught me and she talked to all of us how to journal. And she really got my attention. And she was like, you've got to stop focusing on what you want to change. Because even if you don't realize it, even thinking about what you want to change, you are bringing more of that to you. So instead of focusing on what you don't want, you need to start focusing on what it is. You, what do you want your everyday to look like? I want you to journal. I want you to write it down as if it's already happened. Okay. So I started, I mean, I have journals, pages and pages. I, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you I was consistent for a year. Okay, so in 2020, I was getting up at 5 a.m., five days a week. I was journaling every morning and I was reading self development. And I rarely missed, I'm saying maybe 20, 30 days the entire year did I miss, right? And it, that was only like if it was a vacation or we had something where it's like, I'm getting up and showering, I'm still up at five, but I got to get out the door or whatever. And so changing my mindset, it, it changed my entire life. 
right? It changed my relationship, my parenting, my marriage, it changed all of it. And then I feel like I'm not making excuses, just telling you guys. So you know where I'm coming from, because I feel like someone out here is going to relate to this. For me, it was like the fallout of 2020 happened to my business in 2021 and 22. It was like all the craziness then kind of started swirling around, but I also wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, meaning I had stopped journaling consistently. I had stopped reading consistently. So the difference was, is that life was still happening in 2020, but when it was happening, because my mind was in such a good spot, it didn't rock my world like it did in 21 and 22. For instance, life is still happening right now, but the last couple months, if you've been around me and you've seen the highs and lows, and people are noticing the change in me. It's not that life's not happening. It's that my mindset is in such a good spot because I'm journaling every day and I'm reading every day. And I'm like starting the day where my cup is already overflowing. That way, when someone like knocks into my cup and it spills some of it, it's not spilling all that I have left. So that's the biggest change that I've made. And that's why I, I, I just really want to stress to everyone is it doesn't matter how many host to post you do. If you think host to post doesn't work, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many posts you make. If your mindset is in a bad place, you're not going to attract those people. And that's the thing is when you feel good and you actually are forward focused and you're in that mindset of like, I'm going to do this. Here's what happens to me. Instead of making a post and having that like, man, I just need someone to say yes. And you got your hands clenched and you're like, oh, check it all the time and like almost obsessing over it. I feel like when I'm like that, it never happens for me. But when I'm in a good headspace and I'm feeling good and I've gone for a walk or I've worked out or I've, you know, taking care of my body, soul, and mind, when I go to make a post, I'm one, I'm excited to post, but then I have so much stuff. I got stuff to do. I'm not even focused on if people are interacting because I know they are. And I know some of this sounds absolutely cuckoo because when I wasn't feeling good, I didn't want to hear that stuff either because it, because when I would hear stuff like me saying it back, all I heard was, it's the truth, but all I heard was, there's only one person that's going to fix it. And that's going to be, no one's coming to save me. No one can save my mindset, but myself. And so I know some of you on here, you probably are like, yeah, but that self-development, that journaling, well, what, what's working for you right now? Are you exactly where you want to be? I wasn't. Now, here's the other thing that I really want to touch base on before you ask me another question is I was actually just talking to um, Cheryl. I've been doing a 7 a.m. accountability with her and I looked at her straight in the face. and I was like, you know, do you see a difference? And she was like, oh, 100 percent. And I said, here's the best part. I am nowhere near where I want to be. OK, for me. I feel like I'm starting over. And I know everybody says, you're not starting over. You have all this knowledge. That's not what I'm talking about. I get I'm not starting over. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm used to have, I'm used to having this large team. I'm used to having a lot of things that I don't have anymore. And so if I wake up and I focus on what I don't have, it would make it very hard to post and be excited. It would make it very hard to feel like, man, you know, I'm walking through quicksand, but instead I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I kind of ruined a year, year and a half of my life myself. Did I have stuff happen to me? Yes, but I let it poison me for so long. If I'm not careful, I'm going to look back and it's going to be 2024, 2025 if I'm not careful. And I don't want to relive another year, year and a half like I did. And so I just started making those changes um, of self-development and journaling and not missing it. I love it. Okay. So give us one uh, or two of your like favorite self-development books. Cause that's the thing, you know, some people are like, where do I even begin? And so you may have something that's like for beginners. And then you may have something that's just like 
okay, right now in this season, this is what's speaking to me. Yeah. Um, and kind of a funny story. I'm a story person. Cause I want you to like, realize I'm not just like, I, I'm not talking above you at all. Right. I am right beside all of you. It doesn't matter what your rank is. It doesn't matter. Like none of that matters. Okay. We are all right beside each other, but I want to tell you the story because this is how low of a place that I was. Um, I mean, we're talking low, low. Okay. We're talking kids. We're getting the end of me. I am so thankful that I have a loving and supportive husband like I do because he did not have a great wife. Okay. We're talking most days could not get out of bed because of things that I had got. It wasn't the business. It was my life. Okay. He was not getting great parts of me. Okay. Bad. So when I tell you that I made that decision to like You've got to get your act together. It wasn't like I had to get my act together and the next day everything was fine. <laughs> okay. It wasn't fine. It was, you made a decision. You have to do it even though you don't feel like it. And it actually was Cheryl. She looked at me in the face and she's like, can I, can I shoot you straight? And I'm like, oh, come on. You know, that's what I love. Like, and those of you that have ever spent time with me, when I shoot you straight, it's because I care about you. If I don't shoot you straight, when I shoot you straight, it's because I see something in you, right? hundred percent. That's just how I am. But that's how I want people to treat me too. Care about me enough to tell me the truth. Don't sugarcoat it because sugarcoat it, it, sugarcoating it isn't going to get me where I need to go. It may sound good, but I'm still not going to get where I need to go. So Cheryl said, I don't think that you're journaling and like reading self-development consistently, are you? She's like, I know you're doing it, but are you doing it the way you used to? And I was like, no, 100% not. And she's like, I can tell. And that's where I would start. She's like, Brittany, you're really good at this business, but until you get all that right, like you've got to get in the space. So I got off the Zoom with her. I, I kid you not, rolled my eyes, probably said some words. She wasn't even on, right? I'm just like pouting to my bookshelf run in my mouth to myself about her calling me out because she's right. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to prove to her tomorrow that I got my journal out and that I got a book out. So I went and I picked the smallest book that I could find on my shelf because I did not want to read it. And I kid you not, it is the book that ended up changing my life. But I've had this book since my first like six months in the business and I never read it. It has been sitting in my house for almost nine years and it's called Beach Money. It changed my life. So Beach Money, and that can be for newbies. Okay. And the reason why I wanted to share that story is that I picked it because it was the smallest that I could get it done to prove to her that I did it. It wasn't even because I thought it was good. I just wanted to be like, here, I did it. Okay. The next one, and I'm reading it for the third time. I did it twice on audio, and now I'm doing audio and reading it at the same time and highlighting is The Power of One More. If you have ever, and, and here's the thing, um, I'm going to have some transparency. I'm going to ask for some transparency here. Will you drop a one in the chat if at one time you felt more successful and right now you feel like you're not quite where you want to be? Drop a one in the chat. Highly, highly, highly recommend the power of one more. Once again, I got it months ago. I dabbled with it. And then um, I think it was recommended a couple times. And then I end up, um, my upline's no longer in the business, but we still try to get together about once a month. And so the one good thing about the relationship we have is that like, she'll call me out and she, she's like, no, we have to, we have to fix this. Like, you're too good at what you do. Come on. We got to do this. We got to do this. So two meetings ago, she's the one that she texted me and said, do you have this book? I said, no, because I forgot that the Duns had sent it to me because I really never read it. Right. Opened up, thought it was sweet and then put it away. So when I showed up to lunch, I think it was two months ago, um, my old upline had it for me. She's like, I bought you this. She's like, I think you need this right now. She's like, do not give up. You're too good at what you do. And so I'm telling you right now, it, it changed my business. I love it. Okay. So I know we normally keep, we'll probably, I'm going to ask you like one or two more questions, but um, let's talk a little bit about enrollments. Cause I yeah. know, you know, Jamaica's on the line. So we've got like mindset, what are you doing for enrollments? And 
maybe you could even talk about some tips as far as like, you know, drop a two in the chat if you feel like you could definitely use some improvement on reels or that kind of um, aspect of social media, because I feel like that's your alley <laughs> yeah. and your expertise. And so maybe you can talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and here's the best part. We could always do a two, a two night series and I, or I could just record a bunch of tips and then I, we could hand it out to everybody. I will go as quick as I can. So we don't go over. Um, but I just enrolled my 17th customer this month and it's been a long time since I've done that. Okay. Um, I think it was like, I had 12 or 15 and then maybe like, anyways, it, it's, it's been a long time coming, but I just enrolled my 17th today. The biggest tip that I have First of all, first of all, please know that I've had my head out of my rear end for a couple months. And that first month that I got it together, my enrollments didn't look like that. So please know when I approached it, it was I'm going to do this in this mindset. I'm going to be consistent, even if my results aren't where they want to be. My results are now just where my goal is to do two builder bonuses this month. Okay. And so um, a lot of my customers are coming from two things. They're coming from before and afters and story slides when I either talk about products or show before and afters. But the way that I do it is it's not the same stuff. I will usually only do a before and after post like once a week, once every other week, so that when I'm putting it out there, it gets a lot of hits because they're not used to seeing that on my page. Now, why do I think that this works for me is because I'm very consistent with TikToks and Reels. Um, when, I, when we had the last promotion, I think I ended up with nine customers with the last promotion we had when they got the free hydrate, okay? When I posted the before and after, all of the comments that were on Facebook and Instagram, they were all new followers that had come from my most recent reels. They weren't people that had been on my pages for a long time. And that's where I think the hardest part about this business, but once you can just accept that this is the way that it is, and stop. Here's what I have to tell myself. I have to tell myself that I get paid to do the tasks. Even though we don't, I have to act like we get paid to do the tasks. I don't get paid unless I do these five things five days a week. Because what ends up happening is then I'm consistent and then I get the results that I want. The reason why I know for a fact this is true is that I have tons of followers on Instagram. And so I usually can post before and after and get some. I had stopped putting reels over on Instagram, but then all these things came out and I was like, oh, well, I can just make a post over there and I can get customers if I need them, right? Kind of had that attitude of like, I can just dabble when I want to. I tried like two or three times. I would put a before and after, zero one comment, two comments, and it was just other distributors trying to hype it up for me. Okay, I would delete it. Try a couple days later, nothing. I'm like, man, what is going on? So I was like, oh my gosh, I stopped adding reels. So even though I have 77,000 followers on my Instagram, it's just like having zero. And that's the other thing I have to tell myself too. You stop looking at your following, right? It's good, but act like every day you're at zero. And if you don't do host to post TikToks or reels, or you're not blindly adding and just like adding new friends through boutiques or however you do it, you have to get new. Just like they say, you have to have so many conversations a day. I have the, I kind of have the mindset of like, I have to get new eyes to my page every day because if these 77,000 people were going to say yes, they already would have. Now, do I mean that hundred percent? No. Over time, you're going to get someone that talked to you and they say, I've been watching you for over a year. I'm finally ready. Right? Like you, you're going to have those. But if you waited for them, you're never going to get to where you needed to go as quickly as you want to get there. So that's my biggest tip for um, customers is do things to get new eyes to your profile and then hit them with a before and after. Okay, but here's the other tip with that is 
please, 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 if you haven't done this already, I want you to go to some time. I want you to go to the document library and I want you to type in social media marketer and figure out your pillars. It looks like this and I want you to fill it out. Some people come to my page for other content that people don't want to follow me because of it works. I'm telling you right now, if I only did it works, they would have unfollowed me by now. I have them around for other reasons. Some of them follow me for the faith stuff. Some of them follow me for my fitness stuff. Some of them follow me for my family content. Some of them follow me for my adventures. But because I have them on my profile for one of those pillars, they're also going to see my It Works content too. But if you're not adding value to their life to keep them around, they won't stay around long enough to see that. I'm going to give you a call to action. You can still ask me another question if you need to, but I'm going to give you guys a call to action. And, but it's going to be like a consistent one. If you're struggling with staying consistent with your self-development, but you're also struggling figuring out what to post and add va adding value to your following because you're just like, I don't, because you don't realize how worthy you are. Like you're all worthy, but some of you may not realize how worthy you are. I'm going to give you something that's very tangible. And this is what I did in 2020 because getting up at 445 was so hard. Okay. I am a sleeper. So what I would do is that I started making it a habit that my first post of the day, it was whatever I had highlighted in the book that morning. So like I would get up, I would read, I would highlight, I would take a picture, whether it was my coffee mug, whether it was my book, whether it was Tally was a puppy then, so it was puppy, whatever. And then I would say, this is what I read from today. And then I would just write bullet points from what I had read. So what ended up happening was it kept me consistent on self-development, I kid you not, when I would miss a couple of days, I started getting messages from people that I didn't even know still paid attention to me that said, hey, I've missed your morning post. I look at them when I get to work every day. They're so motivating. So it's a great place to start because it'll keep you accountable, but also give you good content that's adding value to other people's lives. Um, as for distributors, it's honestly just doing a little bit of everything. I had stopped telling my story. I had stopped, and I, I'm going to use this word, but I had stopped being cocky about the business. And I just kind of had that approach that like people know that I've been doing this for a long time. If they're interested, they'll come to me. And I realized that I was doing myself a big mistake, like big mistake. And so I really started telling my story again in a confident way. And like, this is what I'm going to do. And here's the thing. I didn't spill all of my guts to say how bad it had gotten, but I also didn't have a problem saying that, man, it wasn't, man, a lot of things look different right now. <laughs> I mean, I put some of it out there and just say, you know, the last year and a half, but I also called myself out. But here's the biggest tip when it comes to making a business post and attracting people. And I'm, I don't know who needs to hear this today. Uh, seven months ago, it was me. Because when I was in a bad place, I would have those moments where I would feel good. So I would, and I would go make a real post that would say, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And I will say, I truly felt, I did, I did mean it, right? I did mean it. But because I wasn't taking care of my body, soul, and mind, two or three days later, I was back in that valley again because I wasn't taking care of myself. So everything that I just wrote in that post, I never followed through with. I lost the, I wouldn't say respect. What word am I looking for? Can someone help me out? It's not respect. It's not belief. I lost, I almost, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I almost had to earn my followings trust to where they actually believed me that I was actually going to take care of them. And I was going to do the things that I said I was going to do because for about six to 12 months, I had dabbled enough that I would say like, I'm going to do this, this, and this, but then my actions never met my matched my words. So then my enrollments went down because people stopped believing me. So if you're ready to get your head out of your rear end like I did, you're going to have to know that when you make that post, that you're going to have to put the tasks 
but you're also going to have to do it when you don't feel like doing it. And that's what I will say here that I really want to end with is just because I'm taking my care of my mindset and things are good now with momentum, it doesn't mean that every day feels good. But that's why I have an accountability partner in the morning. That's why I have, you know, my mom walks with me two or three times a week. Um, I have other people that I check ba touch base with. I have a couple friends that I'm like, listen, if you haven't noticed, I'm really working hard to keep keep us in contact because I know what I know what I want my life to look like. And it may take me a good two years to get there. But I know if I don't start now and I don't stay consistent now, it's not going to happen in two. It may take five and I don't want it to be five anymore. Okay, so one last question, because I always end on this and you're not getting away from the question, but if you could go back and tell yourself one thing, and I know you've highlighted a lot of things, but I always ask, is there anything specific now looking at your almost nine year journey, if you could go back and tell yourself one piece of advice, something that you would do differently, what would that one thing be? Ugh, this one hurts to say, like this one is hard to admit like so hard. I didn't realize. And here's the thing. I wouldn't, I didn't do it on purpose because I went to dental school, right? I didn't go to school to be a leader. I didn't go to school to do network marketing. So a lot of the success and a lot of the failures I had, it had because you just have to like figure it out as you go. <laughs> There's not, there's not a manual, like with no parenting, there's not a manual that tells you how to treat when you have hundreds of different personalities that they, everybody, I mean, you guys get it, but everyone expects something different from you as a leader. So you're like, oh, I'll do all this. Well, then this group of people, that's not what they wanted. So then they're whatever, right? I did not realize how great of a team that I had until it was too late in the sense of I stopped serving and I didn't stop serving on purpose I stopped serving because I didn't know that it could very quickly go away. And so one thing that I keep journaling about, that I keep praying about, and actually could make me like, I could cry if I don't tell myself not to cry, is Lord, keep me humble and keep me serving. Keep me humble and keep me serving. Keep me humble and keep me serving. And I'm not perfect. I will never be perfect. But you better best believe I am constantly like, okay, what could I do for them now? What could I put in place? What what can I, can I get on here and can I make these graphics? Can I get on here and put this contest together? I'm approaching it so differently because I don't think that my business fell apart because I was a bad leader, right? I truly don't believe that. But what I do believe is it all happened so I can either say it happened to me or I can say it happened for me. And if my big dream and goal is to be in the top 10, but specifically, I want to be on stage. I've always wanted this. I've never had this. Okay. I have wanted to be on stage and in the top 100, have people from my downline this way and have people from my downline that way. And I've only experienced it twice, but like I wanted more of that. The only way that's going to happen is if I look at what happened and say that it happened for me. It all happened for me because I've learned so much of what, what I did that was really good, but then I've also learned what I should have done better and I have area to grow. And it took all of that happening for me to realize that. So that's what I would, that's what I would say is, Man, just don't don't take for granted the momentum that you have and, and be grateful for if you have one customer, be grateful for that one, because that one customer could have signed with someone else. If you have one team member, I don't care if that team member doesn't work for their first 60 days. OK, guess what? They could have signed up with someone else and not done anything for 60 days. But because that person that enrolled them didn't give up in their in their 90 day period. That other person kept on them. And the next thing you know, they became that that person's next double diamond, right? That's my mindset is don't take for granted the customers, the team members, 
the products we have, all of it, be humble and just make sure that you have a good servant heart. I love it. That was so, 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 so good. So thank you so much. And I appreciate you, Britt, for sharing and being vulnerable because some of the things are not easy to share and yeah. um, talk about, but, you know, again, being in this business for so long, there's a lot of life that can happen and a lot of things and different things. And so we're really, um, I just know that she had that on her heart to share tonight. So thank you so much. We will see y'all next Monday night. Um, and yeah, let's go, let's go crush it with the end of the month. I'm, I cannot believe it's already almost July. This is like baffling to me. I'm like, where is someone coming? posted yesterday and said yesterday was six months till Christmas. I wasn't oh, ready no. for that. I wasn't oh, ready no. for that. No. <laughs> I just need my kids to go back to school and then I'll be fine. And then I can think again. No, it's fine. All right. Have a good, (laughs) have a good night. We'll see y'all next week. Bye.